GoForTheTwo.com in with the week six college football predictions. What can you say? Week number five did not disappoint. Great games from top to bottom. TCU knocks off Oklahoma as a five and a half point underdog. We saw Oak State step up. We saw Clemson dominate NC State. The games just went on and on and really set the stage for a marquee week number six. We got seven picks on the video. If you want all the top 25 action and analysis, tune in to Carver and Lisi every night, Monday through Friday, 10 p.m. Eastern to midnight, Sirius Channel 159, Sports Grid Radio. We go through all the top 25 battles. We also go through the Under the Radar games, give you our best bets every Friday. That's Carver and Lisi, 10 p.m. Eastern Time to midnight, every night, Monday through Friday, Sports Grid Radio. Dot com and obviously Sirius Channel 159. Then the College Football Studio Show, College Football Today, 9 a.m. Eastern to, to noon, right before kickoff, Saturday morning, Sirius Channel 159. Or sportsgrid.com for the video. You could tune in. You could see the studio, me, Ben Stevens, and obviously Kevin Walsh breaking down all the game's props, best bets. We have you covered for kickoff college football today. So check it out this coming week. Carver and Lisi, Monday through Friday, college football today, this coming Saturday and every Saturday throughout the college football season. Let's jump right into the video. Seven picks. All the picks will be marked against Monday lines up on the website, gofortheTwo.com. I have best bets out of the seven. You can go to the website, see which ones I like a little bit more than the others, and then tune into the radio shows to get all your uh, analysis on all the games for week number six. Let's jump right into a big matchup in the ACC. North Carolina and Miami. North Carolina coming off a 41-10 to domination of Brent Pry and Virginia Tech. Their quarterback may has stepped up this year for North Carolina. He's completed 69% of his passes, 19 touchdowns, one interception. North Carolina has won three straight in the series, right in the area of about 14 points per game. But it's a little bit skewed because last year they won 45-42. Two years ago in 2019, they won uh, by three points as well. And then the outlier was in 2020 with Sam Howell, Javante Williams, and Michael Carter put up over 500 rushing yards against the Hurricanes and won that ball game by 36. So that's how you get to the 14-point number in terms of the average margin of victory. But North Carolina playing very well right now. May goes on the road. He's still a freshman, but he, he is playing very well in the scheme. On the flip side, you have a Miami team that has an extra week of preparation, and I think that's very beneficial for Mario Cristobal and this offense and defensive staff. Miami did not step up three weeks ago, catching points as a six-and-a-half-point underdog against Texas A&M. They played well from a defensive perspective, offensively moved the football between the 30s and just could not convert in terms of red zone opportunities opted for field goals as opposed to touchdowns they followed that up laying 25 and a half against middle tennessee state they came out flat lifeless they get abused and lose the ball game outright now they come into a bye week i think that benefits a team that's beaten down right now coupled with the fact mario cristobal you want to turn around the program it's now or never you're getting paid money right here in year number one to out coach mac brown in this ball game it, the line opened up at four and a half. They bet it down to three and a half right now. I have to go with Miami in the spot. I could give them the slight edge in terms of the quarterback position. Tyler Van Dyke at home as opposed to May on the road. Coupled with the fact that Miami is pounding the rock for 179 yards on the ground. Their defense has only given up statistically 85 rushing yards to opposing offenses. And the weakness right now of North Carolina is still in run support. Even though they held Virginia Tech to 2.8 yards per carry, not very good quarterback play out of the Hokies and Grant Wells this year. They're a one-dimensional offense, so North Carolina teed off in that ballgame, put uh, that offense into multiple long third-down situations. I think it's a different type of atmosphere with Miami and Tyler Van Dyke. The extra week of prep, they come out flying. I think the speed of Miami is the difference. And they do cover this three-and-a-half-point number Saturday afternoon against the Tar Heels. Another ball game takes place in the ACC. Wake Forest coming off an emotional road win against Florida State. They're catching six-and-a-half points. They step up. They jump up 21-7 to and never look back and root to the 31-21 to win over Florida State in Tallahassee. We talked about it throughout the week on the radio show. What type of team were you going to get out of Florida State? Due to Hurricane Ian, having potential family members in evacuation zones, the mental prep, would Florida State come out 
you know, rolling or when they come out emotionally drained. They had one drive, they jump out 7 nothing, but as the game progressed, they just wore down, did not look like they were mentally and physically prepared for that ball game, made it a close matchup. They trailed 28 to uh, 21 with about five minutes left, couldn't convert and shut down Wake Forest. And Wake Forest added a field goal to win that ball game by 10 points. On the flip side, you had an Army team that got absolutely abused by Georgia State. Now, Army did rush for over 350 yards in that ball game. They're averaging 302 entering this matchup against Wake Forest. Remember, they put up 412 last year at home. They lost that ball game 70 to 56. But I still favor Army in this ball game, catching 17 and a half. Couple reasons why. When you look at Wake Forest, two emotional games against Atlantic ACC opponents, Clemson two weeks ago, and a road win last week against Florida State. Now they come back home to face a heavy rushing attack in terms of the zone blocking of Army. That's a very tough ask for that defense. We saw our, uh, Wake Forest struggle a couple of weeks ago, laying the same number with Liberty. Liberty pounded the rock for 175 yards on the ground. They lost that ball game 37 36. Then Clemson pounded the rock. Rock for 183 yards. They held Florida State in check, only 120 yards in that ball game on the ground. But again, how much was the fact that Florida State was maybe mentally and physically drained from the week in terms of being evacuated or having to deal with the hurricane? So I don't know if that's a full fledged defensive effort. I now favor Army going on the road in this ball game, catching two touchdowns and a field goal. Because in order to win games on the road, you need to sustain drives, you need to run the football, and I think that's the recipe uh, recipe for Army in this matchup, coupled with the fact that it's a revenge spot for the Cadets. They have played very well on the road against Power 5 opponents. Go back to 2018, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Oklahoma and Lincoln Riley, lost that ball game 24-21. to They followed that up in 2019 in the Big House, lost by three. They followed that up in terms of a bowl environment against West Virginia, won the ball game outright as a six-and-a-half-point dog. Last year, catching 13-and-a-half against Wisconsin, they lose by six. The only, they're four and one against a number on the road or on a neutral field site. Their last five games against Power Power five opponents. The only game that they didn't cover because they were favorites was last year's bowl game against Missouri and Brady Cook. They won but did not cover that number as a favorite. So I like Army catching 17 and a half points in this ball game. They don't have to win. They just have to be within the number and I think they can shorten the game enough to keep Sam Hartman on the sidelines and they win this ball game at least from the spread perspective. Another matchup in the ACC takes place. Florida State on the road against NC State. NC State has won two straight in the series by 16 points per game. Picked up this victory last year, 28-14. to 14. They picked it up a couple years ago by 16 points. So they won two straight by 15 points per game. Excuse me. I look at uh, NC State and Devin Leary, and I'm not sold on them. I picked against them last week in terms of Clemson's dominance at home. They won the matchup. Clemson did 30-20. to 20. But you look at the passing attack of NC State. Devin Leary's completing around 59% of his passes. They're averaging 251 passing yards per game, but it's a little bit skewed. If you take both uh, uh, Charleston Southern out of that and uh, UConn, which are two terrible ball clubs, if you take both of those teams out there and just look at the other games that are in there, Clemson, Texas Tech, and East Carolina, Devin Leary and that offense have only averaged 205 passing yards per game completed 58% of his passes, three touchdowns, and two interceptions. I don't like that recipe. Coupled with the fact that I'm not still not so that this is the same powerful running game that we saw last year with Ricky Person and Bam Knight. Both of those players have moved on. NC State is only averaging around 135 rushing yards heading into this matchup. When I look at Florida State right now, they're battle-tested. Tough ball game. They lost to Wake Forest, but they're still pounding the rock for 203 yards on the ground. That secondary has only given up 179 passing yards to opposing offenses and quarterbacks. And I like their wide receivers. They have a trio, Micah Pittman, Ontario Wilson, and Johnny Wilson. 50 receptions, over 800 yards, and seven touchdowns. I think they could challenge NC State over the top, coming off an emotional loss at home on the road in Raleigh. Line open up at three and a half. It's down to three. I like Florida State to strike the upset against the Wolfpack in this matchup. That was NC State's Super Bowl against Clemson. They lost. 
I think they're emotionally deflated coming back home to Raleigh. Another ball game takes place in the Rose Bowl. Uh, UCLA catching four against Utah. We saw Utah right now. Utah with a potential look at against USC. I understand every game is a step up, but Utah dominated last week in terms of Oregon State. They were they were laying ten and a half in that ball game. Never looked back. Put up a forty one spot against a flat Oregon State offense in Chance Nolan. They now go on the road to face Dorian Thompson Robinson and UCLA. I picked UCLA last week against Washington. Thought they were the right team. They started fast, never looked back, and held on to the 40-32 to win. But there's a couple of reasons why I really like UCLA in this ballgame. I said at the start of the year, I believe that UCLA was the most complete offense and defense alliance in terms of the conference. Right now, they're averaging well over 200 yards per game with Zach uh, uh, Carbonet and uh, the rushing attack of DTR averaging 7.1 yards per carry. They're very solid in run support, uh, holding opposing offenses to only 83 rushing yards per game. And you look at Utah right now. Utah struggles with athletic speed type of teams. They struggle with the athleticism of uh, Anthony Richardson week one. They lost that matchup because Richardson put pressure on their uh, defense on the perimeter. I expect the same from Dorian Thompson Robinson. Keep in mind as well, last year, DTR did not play in that ball game in terms of Salt Lake City. It was a very close ball game in the first half with the backup quarterback, and then Utah wore UCLA down in the second half of that ball game. I like UCLA in this spot. I think their defense is playing well. They're playing very good third down defense, holding opposing offenses to 36% of their third down opportunities. Their offense is converting 54% of their third downs. They have 13 sacks on on the year, and Utah since 2018 on the road or on a neutral field under Kyle Whittingham, just 10 and 9 straight up. I think UCLA strikes the upset as a four point underdog at home in this matchup. Let's keep it in the Pac 12. You have USC and Washington State. USC has won three straight in the series by an average margin of victory of 19.4 points per game. Picked up this victory last year, 45-14 to in Pullman. That was the game Jackson Dart stepped up and just played lights out. But you look at this ball game, why I favor USC. The better offense right now, Caleb Williams in that passing game got going. Even though Caleb Williams threw an interception, he threw for over 300 yards. They were able to challenge Arizona State over the top. I thought Arizona State would be in that number just because from a series perspective, Arizona State tends to play USC very tough. They won last year as a favorite at home in Tempe, and two years ago, they lost on an onside kick in the COVID year, 28-27. to They didn't step up against Utah, but if it was the one game with an interim staff that Arizona State was going to step up with, I thought it would be USC. Emory Jones moved the football, but Arizona State still had a very good rushing offense heading into that ball game. Washington State does not. Washington State and Cam Ward only averaging 93 rushing yards per game heading into this matchup. Coupled with the fact that Washington State's defense is giving up 275 passing yards to opposing offenses. If they're going to try and get into a shootout just the way they did against Oregon, USC is built much better than Oregon and Bo Nix. I think Caleb Williams abuses that secondary play and at home. I think USC rolls. There's no look ahead. The line opened up at 13 and a half, 14. They bet it down to 12 and a half. I think uh, Washington State gets absolutely blown out. I could see USC winning this ball game by 20 or more uh, Saturday night in the Coliseum. Another big ball game takes place in the SEC, the SEC's oldest rivalry. You have Georgia that's won five straight by 18 points per game, picked up this victory last year, 34 to 10 against Bo Nix on the Plains. You have an Auburn team that jumped up 17 to nothing against LSU. Turnovers turned around the tide, and LSU won and held on 21 to 17. John Emery and that offense pounded the rock for 185 yards on the ground. You also look at the matchup against Penn State. They did not step up in run support. They gave up uh, over 240 yards to the Penn State and the Lions and that heavy attack of Singleton, Allen, and, and, and Lee in that ballgame. I think it's one and the same in terms of Georgia. I know Georgia got pushed to the limit 
on the road in Columbia. They held on 26-22, to but I expect Georgia to run at will on the front seven of Auburn. That, I believe, took everything out of Brian Harson. He's on the hot seat. And Robbie Ashford. Robbie Ashford threw for 337 in that matchup. Now he goes on the road. This is an, an opportunity for Georgia's offensive line and defensive line to get healthy. At Georgia's averaging 5.2 yards per carry. I don't look for Stetson Bennett to put it up maybe more than 25 times in this matchup. I think Georgia runs at will just the way uh, LSU did. And keep in mind this statistic as well. Since 2016, every time Georgia rushes for over 200, they are 39-0 straight up against FCS and FBS opponents. I do not like where Auburn is from a mentality perspective. After last week's loss where they were up by 17, now to go on the road, even though it's a rivalry game, I think they do not cover this number. The line opened up at 30 and a half. It's down to 29 and a half. Georgia makes a statement that they're still one of the top teams in the nation and cover this line Saturday afternoon in Sanford Stadium. Another ball game, Red River rivalry. Dylan Gabriel in concussion protocol, but OU has won four straight in the series by an average margin of 10 points per game. We saw Texas get right as a nine and a half point favorite. They abused West Virginia, put up over 35 points in that ball game. Defense stepped up, and now they look to be the best team in terms of the, both of these teams. Texas is back on track. OU is reeling after back-to-back -back losses to Kansas State and, and last week to TCU and Max Duggan. Max Duggan ripped that defense for over 300 yards on the ground. The previous week, Kansas State rushed for 260-plus with Adrian Martinez. But you want to give me, Oklahoma, coming off two emotional losses, seven points in this series, and in this ballgame, I'll take it any day of the week. I know the backup, Bevel, only completed 50% of his passes. I know the front seven of Oklahoma looks terrible. They haven't stepped up. But the one, one I want to say, silver lining is that Oklahoma is still averaging around 185 yards on the ground. That's still the weakness of Texas's front seven, coupled with the fact that Texas, whether it be if Quinn Ewers gets time or not, and Hudson Card, they are not as athletic as Max Duggan and Adrian Martinez. I look for a bounce back spot out of Oklahoma. I look for Brett Venables to have the defense up. They force some turnovers. Texas hasn't done it in four straight meetings. A lot of pressure on Sark here. I think Oklahoma's playing with house money. They don't have to win, but they can cover this number of seven points. I actually think they do win. In tough ball games, I'm never buying Texas. This is a tough ball game. The line was won all off season. I know Oklahoma is reeling, but I like them to get healthy in the spot. OU outright over the Longhorns. Those are the seven picks. We'll go through them right now. Miami minus the three and a half. Army plus the 17 and a half. Florida State plus the three. Uh, also, UCLA plus the four. USC minus the 12 and a half. Georgia minus the 29 and a half. And Oklahoma plus the seven. Those are the picks. So we'll go through them one more time. Miami, Army, Florida State, UCLA, USC, Georgia, and Oklahoma. All the picks are up on the website, gofor2.com. Have a great week, everyone. I'll see you on Saturday.